I'm here at the Cantech Letter Investment Conference. George, thanks for being here. Tell me a little bit about who you are and what your company does. Well, thanks for having me. I always uh, appreciate having the opportunity to tell the story. I'm George Achilleos. I'm the CEO of Netramark. Uh, Netramark is an AI company that's focused on the uh, pharmaceutical industry. And essentially what we do is we optimize response prediction. What does that mean? That means uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies run clinical trials. Clinical trials fail at a 90% clip rate. Is there a way to figure out who responds to your drug? Who's responding to placebo or not responding? What's causing an adverse event? What are the key subpopulations within a clinical trial that are causing these failures? RAI can ingest live clinical trial data readouts and find those subpopulations and help inform a subsequent trial, a subsequent phase in a clinical trial for these pharmaceutical companies. We can elucidate to them to say, these are the people that you don't wanna recruit into the next phase. These are the people that you do. These are the things that could be driving adverse events. When we think about the technology that you've been able to build in 2024, there's a lot of competition in this space. What do you think helps to ensure that your company stands out? Well, great question. I always get this. There's a lot of competition and I just want to clarify that a little bit. In the pharmaceutical AI space, there's really three buckets of uh, companies that operate. There are AI companies that operate in what I call drug discovery. They ingest large amounts of data to find the next drug. We don't do that. There's a lot of companies there. There are a next, a second bucket, which is what we call in clinical operations. When you're running the trial, there are things you need to do. Recruit people in the trial, run the sites, do all sorts of things to operate a clinical trial. There's lots of companies who ingest electronic medical records to help find the, the people that you've been told you need to recruit into the trial. We don't operate there. There's a third bucket though, that's very interesting, that has very little competition. Okay, and the foundational element of a clinical trial is called a study protocol. So every time when you, when you go through a clinical trial, it's preclinical, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. As you come out of each phase and you pass, you get a clinical trial data readout, okay? And then if you've passed, you have to then write a new study protocol that you submit to the regulator and the regulator says, oh, okay, you can proceed into the next phase. What we do is inform the creation of the study population within the study protocol. Those data sets are tiny, okay, which do not normally lend themselves to AI. There's usually 65% um, of trials only have about 100 patients and 95% of trials have 1,000 or less patients. So that's small data set. So we're in a very unique position in that we can ingest these small data sets to inform what that study population should look like. So there aren't really a whole lot of other companies doing it. And the founder of the company, Dr. Joseph Girachi, who's a PhD mathematician, has been working on this for over 10 years. The platform is fully commercialized and we're in the process of generating contracts. So thinking about what you do today, if you look long-term to 2025, although there may not be a lot of competition today, it's hard to say, especially with uh, any type of business in your space, what's going to happen down the road. How do you continue to have that, uh, I want to call it a competitive edge, but I know there's not a lot of competition, but, but that edge in the marketplace in terms of ensuring that you are always leading the way. Right. So uh, another great question. Thanks for asking it. In the clinical trial space, you can imagine it's a unique industry as far as my purview because it's an industry where you have a regulator over top of it. It's not like a, a normal industry where you're like, hey, I got a new app and I'm going to sell it to consumers. There's a regulator which terrifies the pharmaceutical companies. So the timeline to penetrate a pharmaceutical industry and become part of their 17 step process is very long. So that's a moat, okay? The second moat is the technology development, et cetera, um, and being able to do that small data set ingestion. So if I look at it over the next kind of 12 to 24 months, there of course will be other players that will be entering this segment, but I feel we've got you know a seven year head start on that whole process. Um, and, and actually, you know, competition is great. So we're really at fundamentally, what are we trying to do? We're trying to improve precision medicine, help people get medicines, get the right medicine. So quite frankly, the more people that are that are actively pursuing this, the better it is for all of us so that the right medicines can get to the right people at the right time. Absolutely. Well, George, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.